in the last video, we derived this formula for the projection matrix where we have a projection or we have a vector and we want to project it onto a subspace. The basis vectors that comprise the subspace also comprise the columns of matrix A. Um, we're going to give a very simple demonstration in this video using the projection matrix. Then in the next video, we'll tackle a, a bit more of a complicated problem. Um, the playlist for all the videos is at the website, digital-university.org. So here's our formula. What we want to do is consider that we have some vector in three-dimensional space. We want to find its components in the E2, E3 plane. So the vectors that comprise that plane are E2 with these components and E3 with these components. So the vector, the matrix A, will simply be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That is the matrix A comprised of these two vectors. These two vectors form the basis for our subspace that we want to project into. Now, if we get a more complicated problem um, where we could even draw it geometrically because a subspace had maybe six independent vectors, all that would mean then is that the column space of A would have six vectors. Other than that, the manipulations that we're about to perform is exactly the same, though. So the first thing we want to do is take A transpose times A and find that inverse. So here is matrix A. So A transpose will be 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. That's a transpose times A, the matrix A. And this gives us across and down 0 plus 1 plus 0 is 1. Going across and down 0 plus 0 plus 0 is 0. And across and down again gives us 0. <coughs> across and down 0 plus 0 plus 1. So there's the matrix A transpose A. And of course, that's just the identity matrix. So the inverse of this is, again, just the identity matrix. So the projection vector P is equal to matrix A times this which is just the identity matrix times A transpose. So here we have a real simple situation. The projection vector P that projects into the E2, E3 plane is just going to be A times A transpose. So we have matrix A. There is matrix A, and all we have to do is multiply it by A transpose because this is just the identity matrix. And A transpose is this.
So multiply these two together. Going across and down, that's 0. Going across and down, again it gives us 0. Across and down, 0 plus 0, again it is 0. Now go across and down, once again we have 0. Across and down gives us 1 plus 0, that's 1. Across and down, 0 plus 0. And then finally we have across and down, that's 0. Going across and down, 0 plus 0. And going across and down, 0 plus 1 is 1. So there is the projection matrix that takes any three-dimensional vector and projects it into the E2, E3 plane. So here we have it. 0, 0, 0, 0, 1, 0, 0, 0, 1. So if we multiply this by some vector, three-dimensional vector that has components, x1, x2, and x3, then we will get, going across and down, 0. Going across and down, that gives us x2. Going across and down, that is x3. So all we have is something really trivial. We have a three-dimensional vector. This matrix lops off that x1 part of it, so we only have the x2 and the x3 components, which of course are going to be x2 and x3 somewhere in this plane. So in this case, the projection operator was very simple. In fact, you could say it's trivial. But again, we wanted to give a, a simple demonstration as to how the projection operator works. And again, the key is that for whatever subspace we're going to project into, we need to know the basis for that subspace. And with those basis vectors, that's what we use to construct the matrix A. And then after that, it's just a matter of doing these manipulations. And in here, we were fortunate because when we multiplied A transpose times A, it just gave us the identity matrix. So its inverse was just simply the identity matrix. So this problem is just a very simple demonstration of the projection matrix. In the next problem, then, we'll go ahead and we'll tackle a more complicated example.